Hey, what's happening, gentlemen? My name is Pastor Derwin Graham, the co-founder, along with my wife, Vicki, of Transformation Church. We are in the Charlotte metro area. And uh, what I want to talk to you about is a topic that, that, that if we allow the beauty of Jesus, the, the magnificence of Jesus, if, if we allow him to shape and to form us in this specific area, not only will we have joy, but we'll have a greater sense of joy, a greater sense of God's kingdom purpose, and it'll even bless our families, it'll bless our children, and this is it. I want to talk to us about gospel-shaped sexual integrity. Uh, um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the inventor and the creator of this incredible gift of physical intimacy. So many wonderful things can happen, but yet when we choose not to use it the way God has called us to, there are a lot of negative things. It's like a fire is great in a fireplace, but not out in the woods. Same fire, different location. Well, God wants to take this gift of sexual integrity and put it in its proper place, a place of, of worship. So as a former NFL player, one of the things that I learned early on from high school to college and to the NFL is you always find veterans that are doing it the right way. How do they practice? How do they think about the game? How do they take care of their bodies? How have they at lasted so long? You, you ask them questions. And so what the Apostle Paul does in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20, it's like we can ask him some questions about this incredible area of beauty, but frankly, has become an incredible area of pain and brokenness, and that is sexual integrity. Let me give you the backdrop. The Apostle Paul is in Corinth. Corinth was the Las Vegas of the day. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Nope, that's not true. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you take what you did with you to and fro. And so the Corinthians, the, the Greco-Roman world, had a very perverted sexual ethic. And so when the Apostle Paul would have went into this Gentile area proclaiming that God has created man and woman in a marital relationship for monogamy, for oneness, just them for their whole entire lives, they literally would have laughed at the Apostle Paul. They would have been like, hey, come listen to this guy. This guy is speaking some craziness. So how was it the Apostle Paul took this gospel-shaped sexual ethic into a pagan, sexually perverted culture? Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. Uh, the Apostle Paul say, says this, free sexual immorality. The Greek word sexual immorality is pornea. It means any physical intimacy outside of a husband and a wife. So it is a broad term. And then he goes on, every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own Body And so the Apostle Paul is communicating a worldview that people back then didn't understand and even to this very day. And then he goes into asking a question that he asked us. He's, he's mentoring us in the gospel. He says, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? You are not your own for you are bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. Really quickly, and I want these three quick points to last for eternity. How is it that we walk in sexual, gospel-shaped integrity? How do we become faithful men with our impulses under control of the Holy Spirit? We've got to understand that we have to run to our union in Christ. We have to run into our union with Christ. I'm gonna say it one more time. We have to run into our union with Christ. Jesus wants to fight this battle. Jesus gives his life for us to give his life to us, to live his life through us. And notice what the apostle Paul says. He says, flee sexual immorality, run. So run into your union life with Christ. Number one, 
Brothers, regardless of your background, regardless of what you've done, regardless of your sexual history, the moment you say yes to Jesus, something incredible happens. You are forgiven of not just past sins, not just present sins, but future sins. You are totally forgiven. One of the ways that the devil keeps us trapped in pornography and sexual immorality is through shame and guilt. Shame says this. You are what you did. Guilt says this. You deserve the punishment for what you did. But on the cross, Jesus takes our sin, our shame, and our guilt, and his precious blood forever forgives us and cleanses us as though we've never, ever sinned. So every time you try to remind God of your sin, he reminds you of his atoning sacrifice of his son. The blood of Jesus throws your sin and my sin into the sea of God's forgotten memory. Stop putting on scuba gear to go down to the bottom of the ocean to see what God has buried there. The blood of Jesus... Is incomprehensible. It is unrivaled in its capacity to forgive. You've got to see yourself as a temple of the Holy Spirit, that, that you are forgiven. For the Jewish people, a temple is where heaven and earth met. For the Gentiles, a temple is where the gods on earth were. So God is saying this, the moment we say yes to Jesus, you become his temple. Heaven and earth meet in you. Here's what the devil doesn't want you to know concerning sexual immorality. He doesn't want you to know who you are. Because if you begin to see what God sees, it'll change what you want to see. If you begin to see what God sees, it will change the way you live. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. The living God of the universe lives in you, and a temple is where worship takes place, where forgiveness takes place, where sacrifice takes place. Just begin to see what God sees. Number two, remember, you were bought with a price. All of us long for significance. Years ago when I was discipling a young man, every time he and his wife would get into an argument and he would feel disrespected, the way he would go for healing is that he would go to pornography because in pornography he felt respected and he, he quote unquote felt satisfied. And then it began the cycle of shame and guilt all over again. Listen, no matter what you accomplish, no matter how much your wife loves you, no matter what you do, there's only one place where you can get significance and you can get satisfaction. And that is found in a person of Jesus Christ. Think about this, the scripture says, do you not know that you're not your own? You were bought with a price. Here's a question. How valuable must you be to God that he would buy you with a price? How significant must you be to him that he would buy you with a price? And the price that he bought you with was not money, it was not gold, it was not silver, it was not platinum, it was not Bitcoin, it was the precious blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus forgives us, it turns us into the temple of the Spirit, but it also says, I'm the only one who can satisfy. Lastly, as you run to your union life in Christ, Remember, you were created to give God glory. It says, for you were bought at a price, so glorify God with your body. So notice, the scene of the crime is your mind. One, you are a temple. Two, you were bought with a price. Three, therefore, you are empowered to glorify God with your body. And never forget this, an African proverb says this, if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go with more people. Who are your brothers around you that can remind you of Jesus? One of the things I struggle with in men's group is men are constantly talking about what they don't do, what they haven't done, their problems. Let's talk about Jesus. Talk about him. Fill your mind with him. Glorify God with your body. You are not your sin. You are not your shame. You are not your addiction. You are a temple of the Spirit, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your bodies. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this word would go deep into the hearts of men, that they would grab a hold of this truth, that who they are in Christ is greater than what they've done or have not done. That who they are in Christ is the power to live a gospel-shaped, sexual, 
morality, as an act of worship, we can glorify God with our bodies. In Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. Thank you, guys.